going to be a dog fight. When you get tired of being coined the loser, being coined not enough, being overlooked and undervalued and underpaid, you got to get tired of that. When you get tired, that's when you win. Every single person that wins big, every single person that you look at, every single person that you're inspired by, every single person that you aspire to be like, they are going to win or they are going to die trying. They are somebody who is tired. Like when you come to the end of yourself, you got to get tired. Something inside of you that's a snap. You got to get tired of being broke. It's going to be a dog fight. You got that dog. And your inner dog has no quit. I love dealing with a dude who think because he come from money, he better than me. Let's go. Let's go. You got money, but do you got that dog? Yeah, you got money, you got print, but do you got that dog? Hey, do you got that stamina? So yeah, you might have something I don't have right now, but if I work hard, I can have what you have. You got to smell blood. Once you get that scent like a hound dog, you get that scent. You see what is possible. You see what you are capable of. In the face of adversity, in the face of challenges, in the face of everybody that says you are not enough, you're not tall enough, you're not big enough, you're not wide enough, you're not fast enough, it's in that very moment that the dream's got to get bigger than the disappointment. It's got to get bigger. The dream, once that dream gets bigger and you get a scent for that dream, you start to smell that dream, there's nothing on planet Earth that can stop you. You become armed and dangerous. You are the most dangerous individual on planet Earth. How do you keep that dog mentality? Guess what? A true dog mentality? I have a dog at home. I can feed that f***er all day long. He never gets full. It's not enough you made to the NFL. Be the f***er MVP. It's not enough you made a 5K. Win a 10K. It's not enough you became a doctor. Be a better doctor. It's not enough you lost 50 pounds. Go out there and do something with it. Guess what? It's 109 out here, but guess what? It's not enough. Stay hard. When we talk about a dog mentality, the dog scrambles, the dog barks, the dog runs after whatever it wants. When a dog is hungry, move out of his way. This is coming for blood. And the reason why you don't have what you want is because you are not hungry enough. Better get some dog. Or you ain't gonna make it. It's gonna be a dog fight. I would love to tell you that on the road to success, everything is gonna work out. It's not. It's gonna be a dog fight. On the road to success, I lost five aunts to cancer. It's a dog fight. In the midst of my business, I lost aunts. I had to go to funerals. We had to get on a plane. We had to drive. We had aunts that are close to my age who died, who didn't have insurance. We had to raise money. A dog fight. I had cousins shot in stores, execution style, shot back in the, back in the head twice. It's a dog fight. Like, you don't see that on YouTube. You don't see that on my TGI. It's a dog fight. My wife, three years ago, seven legions following her brain. It's a dog fight. It hadn't been easy. It's a dog fight. It hadn't been, the road hadn't been success. Like, it's just a paved road. And like, each he go this way. It's been rough. It's been crooked. It's been hard. But I've made up in my mind that I will get a reward for the pain that I go through. I will not stop in the middle of the process. I will not be defeated. I will not be destroyed. I will take everything that happens in my life and I will allow the pain to push me to greatness. You will not break me. You will not stop me. You will not defeat me. The only way I lose is if I quit. It's going to be a dog fight. And so if you're ready to quit, then don't get started. If you're ready to quit, don't get started. If you look at money's easy path, don't get started. If you think they're not going to close the door on you and say no a million times, don't get started. But every time they close the door, I just get excited. Why? Because I am not a no. I'm one yes away.
I'm young, I'm one yes away. You can't keep telling me no forever. You can't keep denying me forever. This type of energy, this type of passion. You can't stop it. You can contain it for a while, but you cannot stop. This is life. And you can't defeat me. There, there is not, you don't have enough power. You don't have enough energy. You don't have enough strength to stop this. Contain it for a year, you might. Two years, you might. You do not have hate, does not have enough energy to destroy love. You cannot destroy this. It did happen to me at 19. It did happen to me at 20. It did happen to me at 30. It happened to me at 40. After I had been through all the, all the pressure I thought I could go through. Life said, you finished with all the pressure? I said, yeah. I said, let me bring on the heat. And then when I went through the pressure and the heat, y'all, I thought it was over. The creator said, now you ready to get cut? You say you wanted to be great, son. You say you wanted to travel the world. You say you wanted to help people, inspire people. And you gotta be a diamond. In our armed forces, let's just pick one. The Navy, for instance. The first thing they teach you. Somebody, somebody over here, help me out. You are in the Navy. Right, you're going, they're teaching you war. Right, what's the first thing they teach you? The first thing they teach you, the very first thing they teach you is how to respond when you have a jam gun. And number two, how to carry a dead body. That's the first thing they teach you. They don't teach you how to defend yourself. They don't teach you how to swim. The first thing they teach you is when your gun is jammed. The first thing they teach you is a uh, dead body, how to carry a dead body. And somebody tell me, why would they start you there? That's the worst case scenario. That's what you're not prepared for. That's what you're not thinking. You're not thinking when you go out there to defend yourself that your gun is going to jam. You're not, you're not thinking when you go out there that your boy going to get killed and you got to drag. You're not thinking that. So listen to me. It's not, it's not hardships that hurt us. It's not my cousin getting shot twice. It's not my cousin spending 50 years in jail. It's not my eyes dying of cancer. It's not my wife being diagnosed with seven legions on her brain that will break you. What will break most people is you didn't prepare for that. So when you put all your little goals and all your little dreams together, it's not the thing that broke you that broke you. It was you never even thought about the fact that you could be broken. They say it's going to be a dog fight. And if you solved, this ain't that you want to get out now. This is where he was like, I quit. But if you're willing to say, I'm not going to quit, I guarantee you whatever success you want to have, you're going to have. You will not outgrind me. You won't outgrind me. You can be smarter than me. You won't outgrind me. I get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and do videos. I'll do a video at 3 o'clock. I'll do a video at 2 o'clock. I'm putting out so much doggone content, they can't keep up. They smarter than me. They better than me. I, I admit, I got a GED. I ain't the smartest person in the world. But I get up and do this for DD. I do this every day for DD. Because of what Didi did for me. I do this for my kids. My daddy wasn't there. I do this for my family. You can't stop me. The reason why some of you should be stopped is you're doing it for yourself. And guess what happens when you get tired? When you grinding, and you, when, grind, when you grinding, grinding hurts. Grinding is a sacrifice. Grinding costs. When you're grinding and your body tell you you hurt, when you're doing it for you, you stop. You never, you never prepared. You never, you never prepared for worst case scenario. And the reason why ET is standing here, because I'm prepared for it. If you know anything about me, I still lay on floors. I still eat chips off the floor. I still do some stuff that to most people is crazy. Like ET, why would you do that? Because I'm always prepared that we may not live in that house one day. One day something might happen and we might have to go back to that. And if I have to go back to that, it's not going to break me. The thing we covered the most, that for a diamond to be produced, it must first go through extreme heat. Extreme heat. 
extreme pressure. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? For a diamond to be produced, it has to go through extreme pressure, extreme heat. And if that wasn't enough, what makes a diamond a diamond is the cut. So I put, you are put through, if you want to be a diamond, you must go through extreme pressure. If you can't take pressure, then you're not a diamond. After you go through all the pressure you thought you could not handle, and you think it's over, then they turn on the heat. Of all the stuff I've gone through in my life, eating out of trash cans, sleeping in abandoned buildings. The worst thing that ever happened is when I went to the hospital and they told me my wife had a chronic illness and she might not be able to walk one day. People say E.T. Ask C.J. It never broke me. Why? Because I've been broken so much. I've been defeated so much. I've been disappointed so much in my life that I know what it feels like and I can handle it. Everybody wants to be a beast until it's time to do what beasts do. I never looked at things as problems. I look at them as opportunities. Who teaches you to be a man? Greatness is not something that you meet once. It's something that you meet thousands of times in your life and you don't reach it if you're not constantly in constant pursuit of greatness. The most powerful thing that we can be is ourselves. Dreams without goals are just dreams and ultimately they fuel disappointment. Those times when you don't feel like working but you do it anyway, that's the dream. It's not the destination, it's the journey. Without commitment, you'll never start, but more importantly, without consistency, you'll never finish. You can't just say you want it. You can't watch the video and say, I want it as bad as I want to breathe. It's cute to say it. But when it's showtime, when the sun comes up, now it's time to hunt. And what separates you from everybody else is that when it's time to hunt, you ready to hunt. It's a lifestyle. You don't hit the snooze button. You don't want to go run, you go run. You don't want to go swim, you go swim. You don't want to make your bed, you make your bed. You don't want to clean your house, you clean your house. You don't want to study, you study. That's how you start to callous your mind. So that became my life. When you can't control what's happening to you, control how you respond to it. That's where your power is. If you stay in your comfort zone, that's where you will fail. Success is not a comfortable procedure. If you think the price of winning is too high, wait till you get the bill from regret. Not only do I want to be a beast, if you follow my 24 hours, I do what beasts do. And they had the nerve to count you out. That's because they didn't understand that your motivation would never let you stay down for the count. It's times like these that we separate the real from the fake. And when it's like you can take a punch and bounce right back because you understand and know exactly what's at stake. It's times like these that we separate the real from the fake. And when it's like you can take a punch, bounce right back because you understand and know exactly what's at stake. It's money time, baby. And this is for all of the marbles. It's put up or shut up. Survive in advance. Win or go home. And that's why you spend all those hours grinding. That's why you spend all those hours pushing yourself to the limit. You spend all those hours running. That's why you spend all those hours sacrificing. You spend all those hours sweating because you know there will be no time for regretting, fretting, or letting yourself or your teammates down. See, you are bound and determined to enter into the realm of greatness that's reserved for you and only you. And so if the day ever comes that you're tired enough to quit, then I need you to act like a car with four flats and retire. I don't think you heard me. I said, if the day ever comes that you are tired enough to quit, then I need you to act like a car with four flats and retire.
Next level success is reserved for those that are willing to not start counting the reps until it starts hurting. Not start counting the shots made until their arms are dead tired. Not start counting the sprints until they're already breathing hard. I heard a wise man say, it hurts, but it works. I say when it hurts, then and only then will you start receiving the perks, the accolades, the attaboys, the atta girls, the great jobs, the alley-oop lobs, the celebration parties with the lobster and shish kebabs, the hoisting of the banners, the sizing for the rings, the smiles, the hugs, and all of the love and respect in between. See, some of you out there, you in the dark. <laughs> and you know what I need you to do for me when you're in the dark, right? Turn the lights on when I'm talking to you, because I don't think you heard me. I said, next level success is reserved for those that are willing to not start counting the reps until it starts hurting. Not start counting the shots made until their arms are dead tired. Not start counting the sprints until they're already breathing hard. So just when they think you're about to throw in the towel, that's when I need you to recall all of the days that you went that extra mile. All of them days that your friend said you were foul when you said you couldn't hang out because you were dialed in. You were locked in. You were in a zone. So you had to be strong because you knew the day would come when you would have to show the world that you could overcome any adversity, any obstacles, any hardships, any setbacks because you were prepared for any and everything. And you understood that it would be impossible to run with them cheetahs when you're walking with the turtles. You understood that it would be impossible for you to run with the cheetahs when you were walking with the turtles. So your mindset is that of a track star and that gives you the mental strength to leap over life's hurdles, to power through the speed bumps, to push through the roadblocks and continue to grind past any and every obstruction that attempts to deter you from your ultimate goal of next level success. So the stresses of the world, <laughs> you laugh at. The dreams they say are out of your reach, you grab at. The things they say you can't achieve, you take a stab at. And when the bullies of life try to knock you out, you stick and move and you jab at them. I said the stresses of the world, <laughs> you laugh at them. The dreams they say are out of your reach, you go and grab at them. The things they say you can't achieve, you take a stab at them. And when the bullies of life try to knock you out, you stick and move and you jab at them. And on the rare occasion that you take a punch from life and it knocks you down, you dig deep and then you dig deeper and then you dig even deeper because you understand that this is the moment to pick yourself up Push through with determination and grit because of all your resiliency, commitment, hard work, perseverance. You have now put yourself in position to show the world that you got that dog and your inner dog has no quit. I said this is the moment to pick yourself up and push through with determination and grit because of all your resiliency, commitment, hard work perseverance you have put yourself in a position to show the world that you got that dog and your inner dog has no quit you've been an underdog in your relationships if you've been an underdog in the weight room if you've been an underdog in life if you've been an underdog financially I'm talking to that person who grew up without a father I'm talking to that person who grew up without a mother I'm talking to that person who didn't grow up with handouts I'm talking to that person who maybe if you did grow up with a little bit of handouts but maybe you were misunderstood and you were overlooked and you were undervalued and you were mishandled and misguided you got a dream to buy a house you got a dream for better relationships you got a dream to, to win a fight you got a dream to and get your family out of the hood. You got a dream to lose weight. I mean, whatever that dream is, whatever you have, that goal, that improbable feat, once you get it set, once you smell that, once you get a feel for it, a taste of it, and the, and the underdog is, is an individual who, who refuses to live in the dark. They refuse to remain in obscurity. They refuse to live in stress and overwhelm and anxiety. They are somebody who is tired. Like when you come to the end of yourself, you got to get tired. Like you have to get tired, tired. Something inside of you has to snap. You got to get tired of being broke. When you get tired of being coined the loser, being coined not enough, being overlooked, 
and undervalued and underpaid. You got to get tired of that. When you get tired, that's when you win. The underdog is a person that comes out on the playing field and says, okay, I've been in this place of pain my whole life. I've gone without for so long. This is the day you make up in your mind where I will take the throne. I'm talking to that person that is acquainted with pain. I'm talking to that person that knows what it's like to come from nothing. And so you literally have nothing to lose. And the only thing that's in your hand is a dream. The only thing that's in your hand is I have what it takes to get to the top of that hill. Because I am not the wolf on the hill. I am the wolf climbing the hill. I have nothing to lose. Counted out, overlooked, undervalued, misguided, betrayed. Somebody who has been really dishonored, disrespected. Somebody who has lost everything, who people stop believing in. It's a very desperate person. They're climbing a hill. They're trying to achieve a dream. And when you are desperate, you are very dangerous. And a dangerous man or woman is somebody who is a disruptor. They don't play by the rules. They are coming for blood. They are coming for blood. Your story is not your fortress. Your story is your fuel. When you doubt the underdog, it's like music to his ears. Tell me I'm not good enough. Tell me I'm not strong enough. Tell me I won't finish. There is this intrinsic emotion, this instinct. You have just awakened the lion in me because they said you can't do it. They said you don't have what it takes to make the investments. They said you don't have what it takes to lose the weight. They said you don't have what it takes to hang on to your marriage. Everybody has been counting out. Everybody has been doubted. The underdog is not a person who doesn't feel pain, doubt, and fear. The underdog is a person that turns that pain, that doubt, that fear into their fuel. If you came from a place where you had nothing, that's everything that you need. Everybody wants a piece of the pie. Okay, everybody wants a piece of the pie in any facet of life, in every arena you walk in, there's pie. And the, the thing is, is that that pie doesn't get any bigger. The pie never gets any bigger. It's the disciplined, desperate, dangerous mentality of an individual that says, I'm going to push whoever I got to push out of my way to get my piece of the pie. Those are the people that get the pie because the pie doesn't get any bigger and the pie does not pursue you. You have to go after it. So whatever it is that you're going after, whatever it is you feel as though you've been destined to do, are you willing to push whoever, whatever, out of your way to get your piece of the pie? So if you're listening to me right now and there's anything in your life that is defeating you, if there's anything in your life that seems like an improbable feat, you got to smell blood. Once you get that scent like a hound dog, you get that scent. You see what is possible. You see what you are capable of in the face of adversity, in the face of challenges, in the face of everybody that says you are not enough. You're not tall enough. You're not big enough. You're not wide enough. You're not fast enough. It's in that very moment that the dreams got to get bigger than the disappointment, than the fear, than the anxiety, than the stress, than the overwhelm. It's got to get bigger. The dream. Once that dream gets bigger and you get a scent for that dream, you start to smell that dream. There's nothing on planet Earth that can stop you. You become armed and dangerous. You are the most dangerous individual on planet Earth. And so an underdog is just somebody who refused to live in the setback. It is a person who rebels against your reality. Your reality of me is that I'm not enough. Your reality of me is that I'm not qualified. Your reality of me is that I'm not quick enough. I'm not fast enough. I'm not tall enough. I'm not linear enough. This is your reality. My reality of me is that all I have is all I need. I'm coming after everything you said I couldn't have. If you're going to come back from the setback, 
the number one thing you have to do is make up your mind that you are no longer going to live in the pain of the past. Pain is inevitable and it is unavoidable. And when we talk about this underdog mentality, the underdog is just a man or a woman who has made up their mind. They are no longer going to live in their setbacks. They are no longer going to live in your reality. Your reality of me says I'm not enough. Your reality of me says I can't do this. Your reality of me says you won't finish today. My reality says all I have is all I need. I'm not living in my setback any longer. I'm moving forward. When we talk about a dog mentality, the dog scrambles, the dog barks, the dog runs after whatever it wants. When a dog is hungry, move out of his way. Because it's coming for blood. And the reason why you don't have what you want is because you are not hungry enough. You are going to have to push, 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 push. Nine times out of ten, the underdog always comes out with the win because the underdog was more hungry. The wolf that is on the hill is never as hungry as the wolf that is climbing the hill. The underdog is still trying to prove himself. The underdog is still trying to tell the world, I can do this. Everyone has been an underdog. Streams all the way back to Little League. When you were a toddler, people will look past you and believe that you didn't have what it takes. What do you want to do to prove them wrong? How are you going to go about that? See, it's beauty in the underdog. Because nobody sees you coming. The struggle of getting people to believe that if they put you in, you won't let them down. The struggle of making people believe that you have what it takes to get the job done. But remember, they will not see you coming as you rise, as you work every single day tirelessly for what you dream of. It doesn't matter who says you're not good enough. It doesn't matter if they say you're not qualified enough. The only thing that matters is that you're willing to work your behind on to change their mind frame. Embrace being the underdog. Embrace being the individual that they say cannot do it. This is what life is all about. When we see the underdog win, it puts belief in us. The underdog represents all of the people that's looked at as nothing. We are the true champions. Everyone on Super Bowl Sunday, they root for the underdog. Because it's something about watching the little man, the small people, the people that they say, are not that talented. Watching them succeed. We had the whole world take our belief out of our head and stab us in the heart with a dagger and told us to not believe. But as they continue to stab, we continue to fight because they don't know about the nights when we cry when we bled the pain out of our system. The blood was the tears. And the underdog is what kept us going. It 
there was the dog underneath the trash, underneath the pain. And we fought to come out of that. Now watch the next time you say, forget the underdog. Because that dog has more bite than that pit bull. Keep fighting. The underdog is truly the greatest. Oh, this is the comeback. Yeah, yeah. This is the year of the comeback. You don't know the feeling training. Every single day. Putting your body through pain. Pushing your brain to its limits. Just to come out and injure yourself. See, we all talk, everybody loves Everybody wants to come to the point. But when you're hurt, when you're broken down, King, who is around? The only person that will give you the strength to rise up and be who you are truly meant to be is you. It's that lion inside your chest. They're saying, I won't let my career end this way. I'm going to be greater and better than anything you've ever seen. Because I know what pain feels like. I know what disappointment looks like. And I don't like the look. I'm coming back for everything they told me I wanted. I'm going to show the world that whatever is broken can truly be fixed. For every athlete, every man that put his all into something and he fell short. Well, just like those kids sitting in those elementary schools, when that teacher asks them to do something and they can't do it, they quit. They pop. They cry. But not us. We're going to do it until we get it right. We're going to do it until we right the end of our movie the way we want it to end. Now, if you better get you better get your money back. The comeback. This is for the dreamers. The dreamers that cannot sleep. The dreams that run away from us when we're running our fastest. We will not be last. We will meet our dreams in our paradise. We will marry our dreams. We will hold them tight to our hearts. And we will make them ours. Make them ours forever. Come here, dreams. I'm chasing. It's all on you. If you fail, it's because you stopped running. If you fail, it's because you stopped grinding. You stopped caring. You stopped working. You 
don't stop working for that dream that dangled in your face. The gift that God left you. Don't be the person that forgets to open your gift. Because that dream has everything you need in it. That dream is the road that will lead to your paradise. Aren't you tired of McDonald's? Aren't you tired of living check to check? Your dream is your million dollar check. We're gonna turn that apartment into a palace. Let's go take what belongs to us. The underdog is truly the greatest. Oh yeah, they got you pegged as a loser, bro. They got you pegged as a loser, sis. But what they fail to realize is that your internal will is strong and still, and even if the playing field is not even, you will never surrender until there is absolutely no air left in your lungs. See, they didn't realize that every setback, they didn't realize that every bad day, they didn't realize that every sad day, they didn't realize that every so-called failure, disaster, missed opportunity or tragedy was just a building block of strategy. And the agony, the pain, the heartache, the misery was put in place to give you the strength to rewrite history. Therefore, it should be no mystery when you make a special delivery to the doorsteps of victory. See, once again, my friend, some of you out there are still in the dark. <laughs> and I get it. You need a boost. You need a spark. So let this serve as your spark to help bring you out of the dark because I need you to be hungry like a shark. So please, turn the lights on when I'm talking to you because I said they didn't realize that every setback of your life they didn't realize that every bad day of your life, they didn't realize that every sad day of your life, they didn't realize that every so-called failure, disaster, missed opportunity, a tragedy was just a building block of strategy and the agony, the pain, the heartache, the misery was put in place to give you the strength to rewrite history. Therefore, it should be no mystery when you make a special delivery to the doorsteps of victory. And you will, because you have been patiently waiting for this moment, cultivating and calculating, using the pain of your life to derive the energy from what was once a deprived and wasted synergy, because your own worst enemy has always been you. But no longer. The days that used to be sad and blue are now giving way to the days of the new you that has grown and grew to new heights and clear skies that are sunny and blue. You made the choice to clear your old canvas. And with a fresh set of mental paintbrushes, you drew your desired outcome and took the necessary steps to make sure it came true. For so long, you've known you had an inner beast inside. But you were scared to bother it. For so long, you've known you had an inner beast inside. But you were scared to bother it. That's just like planting a seed and then never watering it. Never making sure it's provided with exposure to sunlight, basically just squandering it. But that version of you no longer exists. Because from the depths of your inner soul comes your inner beast and you are now honoring it. That seed that was planted in your soul has been patiently waiting. That seed that was planted in your heart has been laying low for the perfect time. That seed that was planted in your spirit has been storing energy. 
that seed that was planted in your middle has been digesting and processing. And when all of these forces came together, they created the perfect storm that set the stage for your inner beast to be born, that set the stage for your inner beast to take form, that set the stage for your inner beast to transform, that set the stage for your inner beast to break through and swarm like a large group of bees. And now you're ready to sting anyone that stands between you and the stamp of greatness needed to make your successful transformation official. So if you have any doubts, let them fizzle. Because now you're locked in on your target like a missile. <laughs> Wait a minute. Make that a heat-seeking missile because you're so hot that you sizzle and your vision is so clear that it's crystal. You now realize that any limitations you ever placed on yourself were always, always, always mental. See, so many of us experience an extended pregnancy as it relates to giving birth to our dreams, our gifts, our true self-worth, and ultimately our legacy. But our inner beast is way overdue to be unleashed to the world. And thus, it went from a gentle rub, to a light tap, to a subtle kick, to a strong push, to a stronger kick, and even a stronger push. See that desire that's telling you to get up and go do? That's your inner beast. The passion to keep pushing through, that's your inner beast. That voice in your head that's telling you to believe, that's your inner beast that journey you have deep inside to achieve. That's your inner beast. The mental toughness to fall down nine times and get back up 10. That's your inner beast. The resiliency to fight to the end. That's your inner beast. The heart you display to persevere through the dark days. That's your inner beast. The fear you overcame to lead and trailblaze. That's your inner beast. Listen to me. Your inner beast is waiting patiently for you to release it to the world. Why is the truth so important? You have to have the truth to have a starting point. And your true self is found in that very uncomfortable zone. We all look for toughness. We all want it but we look for it in a comfortable environment. You will not find toughness in a comfortable environment. Those of you who are listening to this, you will not find it. The only way you find it is to drown yourself in a position where you're just out of sorts, where you can't swim and you're drowning. Where you're drowning. When you say, you know what, ma'am? Dad. Once you come face to face with who you are, you have a starting point. It's in our head saying, you know what, man? Dude, you're not, you're not doing shit. You're wasting a bunch of percentage here. In this other 80% is suffering, pain, failure, 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 self-doubt, darkness. And then a whole bunch of light. But to get to this light, you got to go through all of this shit. You're not succeeding. You're not achieving. It's because you're afraid to go in that dark place to find yourself. You're setting goals. You know you can reach. And when you do that, that fear, that insecurity, that doubt, that's where you grow. You must always set goals that you think you cannot achieve. And then there you get better. When that alarm clock goes off at four or five in the morning, your mind says, no, you just say, this is what we do. It's what we do now. Because to get to where you want to go, the amount of pain involved, the amount of mental pain of how many times you're going to have to do something that you don't want to do to get to where you want to go. Every day you must ask yourself, did I do enough? And then once you do this over and over and over again, it becomes like breathing. I don't want to live this lifestyle, but to get to the other side of this, I have to. 
So if you really want it, you realize what trying is and what trying is not. Your brain is the most powerful weapon in the world. Once you put away your phones and your computers and all that shit we have nowadays, your brain is the only thing you have when you're going through depression, when, you, when you're going through hard times, you're going through death, real life shit. You can't Google that shit, man. You're alone. You're alone. You may have a shrink you're going to, you may have a best friend you're going to, but there's 24 hours in the day where you're alone in this brain and your brain is talking to you in all kinds of ways and it wants to control you and pull you in these different pockets. If you can't control your own brain and your brain controls you, you're fucked. You got to tell your brain where you want to go and how you want to go and how you want to get there. You got to control it. If not, it's over. It's over. All I knew back then was hard work. You got to work hard. You got to work hard. I can't get this paragraph. I can't remember what the fuck's in this paragraph to pass this test to get in the military. Read again. Still not getting it. Read again. But if not getting it, write it out. And that's how I started learning. I realized if I keep going back and going back and going back until the shit just becomes, your mind will say, fuck, okay, we're going to figure it out. It'll find a way. Because he is not going to stop. It's not like, I'm going to try one more time. No. Alarm clock goes off. Boop. We're going back. I can't read right, we're going back. I gave myself no way out, and my mind realized that. They said, okay, we're gonna adapt and overcome now. That was my mindset. And that's how you get through things. You put yourself, you immerse yourself wherever it is, and you become that. I became hell, and that became my new norm. I gave myself no way out. There was nothing outside these walls of hell, nothing. I watched this segment on TV about these guys going through Navy SEAL training. And I couldn't even, I, I wasn't a great swimmer. I was afraid of the water, all this crap, man. I saw these guys just quitting. But at the very end, it says 22 guys, this command officer's up there and he gives this great speech. So I started visualizing me being the 23rd guy sitting there with these guys. I said, man, if I could feel that, that would change my life. And what was that feeling you wanted so bad? Respect, accomplishment? No. Victory. I wanted to win. Not like beat somebody else. It wasn't about that. I, I, I just wanted to go the distance. Everything in my life, when something got hard, I quit. I had to work harder than you, so I quit. Like, man, if I could just go that distance, that extra mile, to just go, just to finish. I want to finish. I want to feel victory. And victory for me wasn't winning. It was just finishing. So I said, you know what? If I could feel like these guys feel, it would change my life. And literally, I started feeling victory just by putting myself in the battle. I started realizing, man, just by going to war with myself every day, and putting these challenges and these goals and these obstacles, these insurmountable obstacles, now we can move from there. But if you look at it as, man, I'm broken and I'm still here. And I'm fighting and I'm gonna find a way to get through this because I have no other place to go. It gives you a lot of power. And no one really finds himself without going through trials, tribulations, suffering, accountability. And accountability is suffering. Being accountable every fucking day for doing right, for yourself, for the people next to you, it's miserable. The more I did this, the more I gained confidence. And then the more I gained confidence, the more I realized, fuck these Navy SEALs, man. 
these guys can't do what I'm doing right now. I had no coach, had no trainer, had no money. I didn't know how to lose weight. I had no knowledge of what I was doing. I was just working. I was just sacrificing. But I would have never found these tools if I didn't put myself in a very uncomfortable place. And your true self is found in that very uncomfortable zone. That's where he came from. He came from all these up obstacles and now he's there. So everybody goes, how do you do that? You know exactly how to do that.